Hey there, Sean Dodlow here. This is lesson number six in my Ghost Note series, and in this lesson we're going to be cover covering compound grooves and odd time grooves, and implementing Ghost Notes into them. I'm not going to spend too much time diving into odd time signatures and all of the ins and outs and polyrhythms and different meters, because we don't have time here, and that's not really what this video is about. Although. I will briefly explain a little bit about them so that you have a basic understanding before going into these grooves. My focus in this lesson is to show you some basic odd and compound time grooves and how to implement ghost notes within, within them. Um, it's up to you to dig deeper if you want to do more research. Some great resources you can use to look more into this topic is Aaron Edgar's book, uh, Progressive Drumming Essentials, also Odd Time Reading by Louis Belson, which is a classic. Uh, and there's so many more. And some players that I definitely recommend you check out. Um, that are just the fundamentals of Odd Time. And they really push the limits of how to play in Odd Time and make it sound good. Uh, so these players are Marco Miniman, Gavin Harrison, Danny Carey. Uh, again, the list goes on, so go do some research. In the first half of this lesson, we're going to be going through compound time. So what is compound time? Without going into too much detail, compound time is any time signature that can be grouped into threes. Also, it's likely to have an eight at the bottom of the time signature. Some examples of compound time include six eight, nine eight, and twelve eight. But there are more, they're just some of the common ones. I do recommend doing some more research into this. Although a lot of you probably don't like music theory, it will really help you truly understand the differences in timing and your counting and it will help you with your odd time playing and your compound time playing. So here is our first groove, exercise one, which is a basic compound time groove in 6-8 time. So hopefully that wasn't too difficult for you and the most important part is that you're counting the whole way through so you know where beat one lands and then you shouldn't have too many problems. This next example, uh, exercise number two, is going to be a little bit more complicated but again we're staying in 6-8 time. We're just going to complicate it a little bit more by changing up some of the ghost note patterns we're using. We're going to have a jab to punch ghost note to accent pattern and following that two 16th note ghost notes. So pay attention, follow along. So now we're going to move on to another time signature, still in compound time, and that's 9-8. So this one's a little bit more challenging, and it moves across two bars, bars 3 and 4. The main thing to focus on here is the accent pattern with your right hand, which we can play on the hi-hat, the ride, doesn't really matter, as long as you can really hear where those accents are. In the first bar, they're on the on beat, but as you go to the second bar, due to the way the time signature works, we then move the accents to the offbeat. If you're struggling with that, take out the extra ghost notes and anything complicating it too much and really focus on being able to count so that you know where the one is and so that you can play that accent pattern moving from the onbeat to the offbeat in the two different bars.
If, however, that was too easy for you, we can add in some more bass drum placements or add in some jab punch or punch jab ghost note things, or maybe even some 30 second note ghost notes. It's up to you, but push yourself. Okay, so now it's time for the final compound time example. This time, we're gonna do it in a 12-8 time signature. There is no complex accent pattern with the right hand this time, so just focus on knowing where the one lands and counting all the way through. Once you can count it properly, then you can add in the backbeat, then the bass drum placements, and then you can start adding the ghost note variants that we have, but only when you're comfortable. So in this groove, we first have a ghost note played simultaneously with the hi-hat, then we have a punch jab pattern, and then a ghost note played between the hi-hat notes. I'll just quickly demonstrate for you. Now in the second half of the lesson, we're going to be covering odd time, which is also known as a regular time. So what is a regular slash odd time? So odd time is any time signature that has an odd subdivision of notes. For example, 5-8, 5-4, 7-8, or 7-4. Again, there are loads more, but they are some of the most common ones. These are more complicated than compound time and can be made up of multiple compound time things put together and they can often sound wrong but when played correctly and in the right circumstances sound incredible so exercise number six is our first odd time groove so this is a basic five eight groove with some added ghost notes so that you know where they would go in the bar start playing it without the ghost notes first so that you understand how the timing works and make sure you can count through knowing where the one is then add in the ghost notes after This next 5-8 groove is made up of exercises 7 and 8 as it uh, runs over the bar line and is made up of two bars, much like the earlier groove that was in 9-8. Much like the earlier 9-8 groove, I recommend practicing the hi-hat pattern first because the accents can be tricky. Then after you've got that down, add in the rest. As we're already using the hi-hat pattern that runs over the bar line, we might as well carry on going, uh, but this time we're going to move to a 7-8 time signature. So we're going to keep that accent pattern going on the hi-hat, but this time we're going to be counting in 7-8. So make sure you're counting the whole way through and you know exactly where the 1 is. Knowing where the 1 is is often the most important part of odd time playing. So once you're not getting lost throughout the bars, you can then add in the backbeat, the bass drums, and then finally the ghost note placements. 
So this exercise starts with two ghost notes, uh, and the challenge is getting the accent with your right hand uh, while keeping the left hand quiet. Then we have a jab punch, which if you've been following this series, you should be a pro at by now. Then in the second bar, you need to make sure you watch out for the non-ghosted snare, snare drum, um, and also make sure that you come back in on the one for the first bar again. So here is exercises nine and 10. Okay, so this was a brief overlook at using odd and compound time signatures with ghost notes. Um, I hope it really acts as fundamentals and it inspires you to push further and it acts as a great building block for your odd time and compound time playing. Please post any other exercises that involve odd and compound playing and ghost notes in the comments and feel free to email them to me at ludlowdrumtuition at gmail.com or post them on my social medias. Now go practice, and I will see you in the next lesson, which is unfortunately the final lesson in this series, where we'll be covering a number of advanced ghost note grooves. I'll see you in the next video.